friends and welcome back. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, and I thought we would take this dresser that I did get at Goodwill for a few dollars <laughs> and uh, put a French poster over it so that it looks like this. There is a site called blockposters.com and you can measure your dresser or whatever piece of furniture you're working on and you would simply add the dimensions into the block poster site and here's what prints out. Now I'll come back to that after I'm done painting because the first thing that I did was I painted my surface using some Annie Sloan chalk paint. I sell chalk paint on my website because the Annie Sloan chalk paint is not that easy to get. It's one of my favorites but the other favorite is the one that I sell or I recommend when you go through my website, which goes through Amazon. So if you've got Amazon Prime, all of the same features apply. But when you shop through my site and my store, it allows me to keep making these videos. So I painted this whole thing using just one color of the chalk paint. And I used a roller because it seems to give much better coverage. Now I applied two coats of the chalk paint to the surface and once it was dry I wanted to add a little bit of a decorative technique. So what I did was I looked at the background colors in my poster and tried to find the colors that matched or complemented those and I'm going to do a little bit of a faux technique on this. So I see three, about two or three different colors in here and I put those on a plate and I'm going to use a sea sponge and a brush to kind of give it this age effect in the background. Not exactly the same, but I'm going to try to do that. Now I really think it's a good idea to test this out on just a scrap piece of cardboard or paper because if you use too many colors or the wrong combination of colors, the surface can start to look a little bit murky or dull and we're not going for that. So what I did was I took a piece of cardboard and I painted the chalk paint base color on there and then I started to add different colors and I just played around with them and by the time I was done with this one piece of paper I looked and I said oh this looks really nice but this doesn't so I knew exactly which colors to use and I also experimented with this piece of saran wrap I used to do this back in the day I would paint furniture and while it was still wet I would take the saran wrap and bunch it up and place it over the surface because that gave even more texture to this now, it looked like too much texture to me along the way, so I ended up using a dry brush and smoothing it out a little bit. But these are just a couple of ideas for you to practice and see what you like the best. I'm trying to get that background to look very textured. I don't want a flat base color here. So I pounced the colors on and note to self I should not have put the camera on the same surface I was pouncing on I'm sorry that it's all jumpy right here 
But what I did was I pounced on three different colors that I was very happy with. I then took the saran wrap while the paint was still wet. I bunched it up a little bit and then I laid it haphazardly over that wet paint and I pressed those creases and wrinkles in. Now for me, as I mentioned, that was still, I didn't like that much texture to it, so what I did was I took a paintbrush and I just smoothed a lot of this out. Now can, you can use a dry brush and smooth it out, but I took a little bit of that base coat and just applied it sporadically all over that surface and I just started to kind of crisscross it and pull it out and blend it a little bit so that it was just a very soft type of a background and I did this all over the top and the outside we're all probably going to be working on a different piece of furniture so you can just follow these instructions for whatever piece of furniture you're working on and I completed the whole part I only put the base coat on the front of this dresser because we're going to cover it with paper anyway. And while it was drying, I went back to my poster papers. So what I did was I took my paper cutter and I wanted to get rid of this white border around here. I don't want those to show up when I'm doing the dresser, so I removed those. I'm not sure about the other sites that print out posters, but on block posters, there is a way for you to print these out without the border. It was a little complicated or time consuming for me, and I'm very impatient, so I just wanted to print them all out and get to work, and so I cut these edges off. Please direct all of your questions about block posters to block posters. They'll help you out. And in the meantime, I'm going to remove all of these white borders around each sheet that I printed out. Once I was all done, I lined the bottom of my copy up with the bottom of my dresser. And you want to start in one of the upper or lower corners so that you make the rest of these all fit in the right place, like a puzzle. And here's one thing that I forgot to mention. You have to have to use laser copies in order to do this. There's a few reasons why, and I'll tell you those as we go along. If you have an inkjet printer, you can print all of these out at your house and take them to any copy center. Here in the United States, all of the copy centers only use laser printers. If you don't have a laser printer, if you've got an inkjet printer, and you'll know if you've got an inkjet by how much the colors will bleed and run and you don't want that this is a lot of work it took me about three days to do this and you really need to take your time but you want to make sure you don't have an inkjet print so get laser copies if you don't have a laser copier at home now the other thing I wanted to show you here is I deliberately put this piece on using a dry piece of paper and you don't want to do that and I'm putting this on I hate to do it but I wanted to show you what can happen I am putting this on dry so that you can see what happens if you don't wet the paper here's what happened do you see these creases here these are actually air bubbles this has dried and you want to wait until this is dried and take a safety pin and puncture the air the, the pocket of air, whether it's a wrinkle like this or a bubble, and you can get both. And just push that air out. Now the way to avoid this, and even when you do this the right way, you can still get these air bubbles. So it's good to know, just in case you get any of these air bubbles, wait until it dries, and then use a pin to puncture it and push the air out. And then we're going to apply some decoupage glue and water over it. If this was an inkjet print, this ink would be running and bleeding and you would lose all of the work that you just did because you'd be rubbing the ink away. So that's another reason to make sure you're using a laser print. And now I'm going to apply the second piece of paper, the second copy, and you want to line these up as best you can. But what I'm doing is I'm wetting the back and I'm using a clean sea sponge. You can use a sponge brush. I don't suggest you dip it, that could make it too wet. So I'm wetting the back, 
And what I'm going to do now is apply the decoupage glue. I should be using a larger brush for this. This brush is too small and it's taking a little bit too long. And now I'm going to place the wet copy down over where I just applied the decoupage glue and I'm going to line it up as best I can over top of that other image. You can see that I left the end on here. The, you can see I left the border on this one and that's because it actually helped me. I knew I was going to file it off anyway, but it helped me to keep this straight. Now you see how much more pliable the paper is. You can pick up the corners. You can push air bubbles out a lot easier this way. If this was dry, the paper would stick immediately and you would tear it. So you want to make sure that you dampen all of your pages. And I'm going to go around this whole surface and complete this. One other thing that I didn't mention, you can cover up creases because once it's dry, when I say creases, wherever this opens, whatever you're working on, if you're working on a flat table, you're fine. But if you're working on a dresser or something like this, where there are creases and the cabinets have to open, you can wait until it's dry and take a razor blade and just go through any of those creases. And once everything's dry, I'm taking a fine sanding block. Uh, this has fine on one side and medium on the other. And make sure you file away from your paper. If you file in two different directions, you could pull the paper away and you could remove the glue that's keeping these edges down. So file in one direction and pull those edges away. Now I'm going to go around the rest of this piece of furniture and following those same steps, I'm going to wet the paper, I'm going to apply decoupage glue. I've got a couple of challenges here and I just thought I would show you this in case you have something similar on the piece of furniture you're working on. I have to go around a curve and cut or tear the paper. And I've also got to go over a crease up top there where, the, where this cabinet opens. And you'll notice there's a little keyhole right there. So what I did was I followed all the steps. I placed the paper down, lined it up, keeping the pattern in order, pressed all of this down, and you can see some, this isn't the easiest thing to do. The papers kind of move away from where you need them. You have to keep adjusting and readjusting. And I took a razor blade again to go around that one area where the keyhole is. And I did do this while it was wet because I knew I would be able to press the paper down around that keyhole. And I had to do that anyway. And I took a fresh brand new razor blade and because I didn't want any air bubbles, I just cut around this and then I pressed the paper down. Now I went around the rest of my surface and I completed the whole surface following all of these same steps. And again, we're all working on different pieces of furniture, so I don't want to spend too much time on this, but what I did do was I had to use that razor and cut away some of this image, and then I just decoupaged wrapping a little bit of this around the corner so that the white didn't show. And then I just had to line up the other half of the copy or the image on the left side like you see here. And by the way, even when you try to align all of these and set them up perfectly, there will still be errors sometimes. Um, I've, I've been doing this for decades and it was not the easiest thing to do. So don't feel frustrated if you have to remove a piece. You might want to get extra copies in case something goes wrong. And here I am just putting on the final piece here. And once everything was dry, I took the sandpaper and went around all of the edges, I'm sorry, the sanding block, and I pulled away all of those excess edges, or filed them away. And you can notice a couple of things in here. The papers, you can see, for some reason, there's two different colors. My printer did this. 
one page looks a little bit more rosy and the other one looks gray. I don't know why that happened, but okay. So I coated this whole surface with one coat of decoupage glue. And then I wanted to go back over it. You see the spaces that are in here? You can't really notice those from a distance, so I'm okay with that. But one other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to reinforce some of the script in here and I took these paint markers. Now these are very specific paint markers. You can't use just any marker and I'll have these on my website. I'll have a couple of links for you to purchase them. You see this script? It, it's a little faded and I'd like it to stand out. So I'm going to use these paint markers and I'll show you why. And another good thing about the paint markers is you can wipe that right away. They don't dry right away. They do dry quickly. So I'm just going to freehand this and I'm going to go over all of the script with the marker to make it stand out. And then I took this paint marker and I put it along the very edge and you're able to rub it and what happens is you can see that once you rub it it leaves a really soft edge and just a little bit of the color here to age this so I went around the whole outside front of my dresser and aged this a little bit more using these paint markers and you can see in this shot how all of the script now stands out. But I also wanted to do a couple of other things with the paint marker. I wanted to go into these places that are already shaded. And I wanted to add a little bit of the paint marker. You can really see the two different colors here, but it did turn out just fine. Now I put the marker here, and as you can see, I'm rubbing it in. It's just shading it ever so lightly. And there are light spaces and dark spaces, so I took a white marker also, or a white paint pen. I did not rub the white paint pen in as much because I really wanted the white to highlight my work. And I went around the front of this, and just where there was already shading, I shaded it a little bit more. I also added some highlights. And there are a couple of final steps you want to take on this. You can add a brush on top coat or varnish or a spray on. And I'm going for a matte look. So I am using a spray top coat, a spray on top coat. Now when people use chalk paint, they like to use wax over the chalk paint. You can do that, but you only want to do that over the chalk painted areas, not over the decoupage. Chalk paint is porous and it will accept the wax but you don't want the wax over the decoupage glue or the varnish. So I'm going to cover this whole surface with a varnish. Now I do want to mention that for the top of this, if you're using it for a table, you want to put a couple of top coats on there, maybe two or three. I'm adding two or three just because I'm going to be using this a lot. And now everything is dry. I've moved this in the garage. The setting sun is on it. And here is how our completed project looks. I have almost all of these supplies on my website, which goes through Amazon. And if you've got Amazon Prime, all of the same features apply, but it really helps me out when you go through my website to make purchases. Thank you so much for subscribing. I try to get back to you guys as soon as I can if you've got questions. Thank you for your lovely compliments too. You guys really keep me going. Upcycle with Decoupage is on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. And in the meantime, you have a wonderful week. You can see it's the start of fall here. Some of the leaves are starting to come down already. And I will see you, my friends, next week with another video. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.